Welcome back, Troglodytes, to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. Hey, it's been a while. <laughs> for whatever reason, the market's really dry lately. There's been nothing for me to buy, so I hope you guys kind of enjoy, you know, some of these other random videos. I revived that whole Would You Rock or Not series. It seems most of you seem to enjoy that, so I'll keep doing that on days that I don't have guitars to show. Unfortunately, this is the only guitar I've bought in probably the past week or so. So I'm back for a day with a regular episode and we'll probably just do some more case reviews, some more would you rock or not. So feel free to send me some links to some really cool guitars. But for today, we're going to review this 1965 Melody Maker. I know we've had quite a few of these recently, but it, I just love these things. They're, they look stupid and goofy. They're a weird fish shape. They're kind of a double cut styled guitar but these are the 65 melody makers now they did make these in other years it's just it, whenever i see a double cut like this i just automatically say it's a 65 because that's the easiest year to uh go ahead and say but i mean it could be i think like a late 64 or 66 or something but what's nice about these guitars if you haven't seen my other videos is it's just a nice little slab of vintage mahogany you got a nice mahogany neck brazilian rosewood fretboard and it's just a really uh, bare bones rocker guitar. Joan Jett was famous for using one of these. Uh, she had painted hers white. But this one is in the original red finish. You can see a bunch of beautiful finish checking as you'll see on a lot of these examples. Now, if you're looking for a 100% original example for whatever reason, this is not it. Pretty much everything has been swapped out on this guitar. And it's definitely a player's grade example. But, when it comes to a melody maker, you know, from the 60s, the stock pickup's garbage. I wouldn't necessarily say what they put in here is terrific either, but there's always options, a lot of P90 options that'll fit in this original route, or you can just route it for a humbucker, or do like what that last crazy person did and route a neck pickup right here. Just, just don't uh, put it where it's supposed to go or else the neck will fall out because of the neck tendon. So without further ado, let's kind of go over this sweet guitar. Now this example is break, crack, and repair free, thankfully. Truss rod works as it should. You can see you've got this tiny little Gibson headstock here. That's just how they were. This originally would have had a three in a row Cluson type tuners, but they've been upgraded to Grovers in the 80s. You can see these are definitely fairly old tuners on themselves, and I'm sure they're probably actually worth a decent amount of money. The nut has been replaced. It looks like they tried to make it look original by putting some uh, lacquer over the sides. Then you also kind of have some on the top here. Uh, it does its job well enough. I would suggest maybe, you know, within the next couple of years, replacing it again, just because, I don't know, it seems like they're starting to get worn down a little bit, but it does play just fine as of right now. I cleaned the frets and fretboard. They're looking great. When I had initially gotten this guitar, it almost looked like somebody put lacquer over the rosewood fretboard. That's just how dirty this thing was. So I did my typical uh, steel wool cleaning treatment as well as uh, the lemon oil. Sure, it's messy, but it gets the job done and it's definitely a much better player now because of it. Fresh set of strings also always helps as well but beautiful board. I do want to uh, make mention of around the first fret, I'll see if I can get the light. You can see there is a little bit of indentation. What that's caused from is a player's long fingernails. Over time, it'll wear away a small spot. That one's not too bad, but it is there, so I want you to be aware of it. If you're not familiar with these, the necks kind of start off a little small here, so it's easier to uh, play. And then as you go up, it gets larger. Now this example isn't quite as extreme as the other ones I've had. It's actually a lot more comfortable for me. It's a little bit wider feeling up here, but overall a very good feeling neck on this one. I do want to make mention of a little area here. It's kind of a ding. You don't really feel it while you play, but depending on where your thumb is, you might. So you might want to pass on this example if that's kind of bothered you. But heel joint is perfectly secure. You're good there to the body. Okay, original pick guard here, but besides that, that's pretty well the only original part to this guitar besides the husk itself and the finish. Yeah. This is an early 80s Seymour Duncan stack pickup. It's meant to be in the bridge of a Stratocaster, so it's, this is a very Straty kind of sounding guitar. No additional routing was made. However, you can see where the original pickup would have been mounted to. They actually mounted this pickup directly into the wood. 
Now, thankfully, they were smart enough and they didn't accidentally drill through the back, but I'm sure it's fairly close there. So that's really the only modification is it's been drilled directly into the wood. So if you wanted to take that out and put any other type of pickup in there, you could. When I had gotten this, the pickup was kind of loose, so I kind of screwed it down a little bit tighter, and that kind of made it so the strings are a little bit higher, so you don't quite get as much output as you could get if you were to loosen that up a little bit. Uh, what I would suggest would just be putting like some more paper towel underneath, because the pickup, I don't know if you can tell here, it kind of slants a little bit just by the way the pickup's made. The wires kind of are at the front. So you'll always kind of have a slight lean to it. Now this pickup isn't garbage, but playing this guitar, I got really bored quickly of the only single tonalities here. Usually when you have like a, um, some type of a humbucker or a P90, you can uh, use the volume and tones a lot. Uh, I didn't get a lot of tonality differences on this guitar. I mean, you basically have full on tone and off tone as far as your different sounds for this one. So is it the best sounding melody maker I've had? No, but you know, this pickup on itself, I mean, you could probably get 50 bucks for it. If you sold it on its own and you could get one of those uh, P90 pickups and put it in there, that would fit. Or uh, I do have a vintage mini humbucker. The mini humbuckers sound good in these. Knobs have been replaced. They're kind of a uh, 1960s style knob here, so they kind of look burst-ish. Uh, the pots have been replaced. Basically, all the changes you see on this guitar were done in 1981. The pots are 1981. I know the seller told me they had replaced the tuners in the 80s. And uh, this is a Leo Kwan badass bridge, so it's intonatable, which is nice, a nice feature because the original Thunderbolt ones, you couldn't really adjust your intonation at all. Now you're probably wondering what these three giant holes are. I've mentioned these in my other videos. This originally would have had a, uh, a trem bar on it. I do have it. I'm going to sell that separately because, you know, if you don't want it, why pay, you know, an extra $200 for the guitar just to have the trem. If you want it, I'm going to include it as a bundle for uh, an extra amount. I haven't quite decided that yet. But that'll be on the reverb page if you're interested in that and I can uh, go ahead and set that up if you want me to. But these trims don't stay in tune basically. It's a metal bar with like a, a lip at the front that screws down to the body and then that just kind of clips on. They don't stay in tune, they don't sound that good so I would just suggest leaving it off but they are kind of a cool piece of history and you do have that on the front showing that it was there. So we'll kind of go over the condition here. This is a well-worn player. You can see you've got some finish wear around here, kind of by the uh, heel joint there. That's just kind of, I'm not really sure what it's caused by. It's probably uh, somebody picking right there. That'd be my guess. As you've got a lot of small nicks and dings on the front, lots of beautiful finish checking. I really do like these mid 60s melody makers. I just wish they came stock with like humbuckers or something. If they would have had a melody maker like this, you know, stock with T top pickups, these would be the best things ever. Uh, you can go ahead and route a neck pickup slot out if you want. But again, lots of wear and tear. This is definitely not a collector's piece. I mean, nothing's really even original left on it besides, once again, the pick guard and the husk itself. Back of the headstock here, serial number, it looks like 51283. You can see the old holes for the three in line tuners. They've been filled in in between. And you've got some nice Grovers on here. Uh, they definitely do look from the 80s or even before. And again, I think these are probably worth a decent amount just on their own. No breaks, cracks, or repairs, but I do want to make note that right here, there's kind of something that looks like a repair to get it in the correct light you can see it right there that's actually just a wood grain line but it's kind of in a suspicious spot but but i'll show you under black light that that is just a wood grain line so here you can see the back of the neck besides this large ding it's fairly ding free you've got some nice figuring to the wood and it's just an all-around comfortable guitar to play i i can't tell you enough how much i love these mid-60s melody makers they're goofy as all get out, but pick one of these up and you'll understand why I'm a heavy advocate for these things. 
The back is actually fairly chewed up. You can see, like, in right here, this looks awful. I'll agree with you. It looks garbage, it looks abused. But you feel it, and you really don't feel the indentations as bad as they look. It's just kind of like a minor impression. So it definitely doesn't feel as bad as it looks, but there definitely is a lot of wear and tear here as I show the light on it. So it's a player's guitar overall, but you know that what's kind of nice about this and that I'm not including all the original parts. Like I'll tell you, tell you, I have the original pickup and I have the original trim bar that I could put back on it, but then I'll just have to charge you more. So I'm just gonna offer that as kind of a bundle deal if you want the pieces. But if not, I'm much happier offering this as a player's grade piece that somebody can pick up. Because most people, you're gonna modify the original pickup anyways because it's garbage. And the trem doesn't stay in tune, so you might as well just uh, leave without them. But there is the option to get it with it. Now these strap buttons kind of look 60s to me, but I don't believe those are the original ones. But lots of nicks and dings, some through the finish, but overall, it's just a really cool player's grade guitar. Uh, as a final review for this guitar, I think I've already said it enough. Yes, I love these 65 Melody Makers. What's really nice about this one is it's super lightweight, and we will see that here in a second. So I'll definitely try one of these out. Take a look under black light here. You can see some average wear and tear along the edges of the headstock, but nothing too bad. Here you can see that picking wear I was talking about along kind of the heel joint, and lots of nicks and dings. And that's the other thing that's nice about these, is these are not expensive vintage guitars by any means. If you throw some decent pickups in them, they are awesome. And since they're not overly expensive, uh, they're just fantastic guitars. You can really modify these to whatever whim you want, and this really could become your next main guitar. But again, everything's pretty well replaced except for the pick guard. Back of the headstock you have some more light chipping to the finish, and you can see it looks like there might have been a few different tuners on this one. But you're now on a nice set of Grovers, they stay in tune pretty nicely. And here's that uh, little wood grain line I was talking about, so you can see under black light there has been no repairs. Got some wear in the finish, there's that large ding I was talking about earlier. But overall, the neck's in good shape. You've got some light nicks and dings, and some side wear and tear, as I'll show you here. The back of the guitar, again, there is quite a bit of buckle worming. It looks a lot worse than it feels, though, I'll definitely tell you that. But overall, I mean, if you don't mind, you know, a beat up player, I mean, this definitely looks like a 60s guitar that has been played a lot. You don't have to be scared to take this one out on a gig because you can easily replace these for around, you know, a thousand bucks or less. So, very awesome guitars. Now, I could be remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the lightest 65 Melody Maker I've ever had at 5 pounds, 3.2 ounces. This guitar comes with a non-original case. Uh, it came to me with a gig bag, so I upgraded it to this case. These are the type of cases you get and you're really disappointed because they were kind of cheap, but your Les Paul <laughs> hardly even fits in it because there's just too much wiggle room. But what's kind of nice about these cases is the horns of the Melody Maker really secure them, so they're awesome fits for vintage Melody Makers. But lots of signs of wear on the outside. But you do have a one, two, three, and a fourth back latch here. So it's actually a pretty decent case. Here you can see the fit of it. You kind of got to smash this part of the felt down, but then once they fit, they're great. And since they kind of go upward at an angle, it keeps the headstock up, so that's pretty good. For the cleans will be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP1C.
be interested in this guitar feel free to contact me on my facebook page facebook.com slash troglis t-r-o-g-o-i-s and you can also check out the listing on reverb.com all right troglodytes don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next episode of the troglis guitar show take care